Hello everybody, I'm going to show a quick way on how to make a road system using the dynamic road system on the Unreal Engine Marketplace and OSM data from OpenStreetMap. This road system you see in front of you was prototyped in just a few minutes using a bot on Discord I created. I want to preface this by saying it isn't 100% accurate and it isn't a part of the sale dynamic road system pack since it depends on OpenStreetMap working and a few other independent systems. The actual end result took me a couple of extra hours to get it the way I like it, but you can probably still tell that there's room for improvement. Because we recently updated the dynamic road system to have better support for this OSM integration, it's now even easier to make your own large-scale road system. The first step is to go into our Discord channel, which there is a link for in the description of this video, and scroll to the OSM channel and type in slash OSM, and it will have a few different text boxes to fill in. The third box can be ignored. We are planning to make a feature that will allow you to specify which types of roads you want to import, such as exclusively highways or if you want to ignore tunnels, it would handle that. But we are going to use latitude and longitude shown in the example to get the road system of Washington DC in the United States. We can hit enter and wait for the result in real time. But I'll quickly show what the map we are copying should look like. Everything in the highlighted area should be copied over. And now that the OSM is done, we can see the output, and you may notice that the output message is private, so only you and the server can see this data. To quickly go over the privacy policy of this bot, anytime a form is submitted, the user's name, the coordinates, and the time is recorded by the server internally, and this is to prevent the user from spamming or misusing the bot, or if it crashes, the coordinates will be tested internally to help us prevent crashing in the future. This bot will turn off every second Tuesday of the month for automatic window updates, but other than that, the bot should be on 24-7. But going back to the output, it should give us a zip folder with a text file inside. It will ask you if you trust the file download, and to that I'll say yes, but it never hurts to use some sort of security software if you want to ensure the file is safe. Now that it's downloaded, we can open it, and it's a long list of Unreal Engine data that doesn't really make sense to us, but when we paste it into Unreal Engine, it'll make sense to Unreal. You have to give Unreal a second to load it, and just like that, everything is loaded, but looks messy. This is because some things get loaded in the wrong order, so it needs to be refreshed. Luckily, we have a new blueprint called the Mass Road Manager that can help us with this. I don't know why Unreal does this, but the categories for the options on this blueprint are scrolled way down. If anybody knows how to fix that, I would love to hear it. And for those of you that have older hardware, we have a feature in the Mass Road Manager that can change the resolution of all the roads at once, and that can make this road system run 10 times faster. Granted, the road system will not look that detailed, but could be very convenient to use while you are still editing your roads. Due to the road system being a dense full square kilometer, and I am recording this in 4K on the same computer, I am going to set this to 0.5 to run at half resolution. So I set the value to update road resolution at 0.5 and then press the button that will update all the roads labeled update all roads. Now there are still some roads that seem stretched and that is because the points they're supposed to connect to got cut off. So you can choose to fix the points or delete them. I'm going to delete them. If we look around the scene you may notice that there is one road that has very weird overlap in the middle. And this is one of those weird edge cases my program doesn't know how to handle because it's counted as three roads trying to join itself to the middle of the road at one singular point. I believe that this is either mislabeled in OSM, or is two roads going under the same name, and it should really be considered an intersection. But that won't stop us from correcting it. I'm going to correct it by editing the road lines in this road, and cutting them off before the supposed intersection and after it. There's a saying that goes, choose a lazy person to do a difficult job, because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. And we're going to fix it using the lazy man method. The correct solution would be to find a way to cut the road in half, add an intersection, and reconnect all the road connections. But that sounds like a lot of work. We already have all the road connections set up, so it would just be easier to edit all the road lines. So I'm going to go into each road line and adjust the start or end cutoff so that it stops at where the intersection should start. Then I'll truncate the road and add a new one with the road connection, Originally, I was planning to just duplicate the road lines and then cut them off from the opposite direction, but I found out while recording this that I didn't include the function for that in the latest release. But the next update of the dynamic road system will include that method. 
When we're all done, it should look something like this. Now that this road looks good, we can take a look at some of the other roads. And immediately I can see some roads and parking lots that are overlapping in a weird way. There are a few ways to deal with it. We can fix it by readjusting every road, or we can take the easier method and just have the roads not overlap on top of each other, and just allow them to intersect. This method only works with flat and semi-flat roads, but since this is a city environment, it's not too hard to believe the city's landscape is semi-flat. We can fix this by going to the Mass Road Manager and checking Allow Road Overlap, and use Report Road Overlaps. And any roads that are stacking on top of one another is going to add the other to its Actors to Ignore When Snapping variable, so that it ignores that actor. In order for it to update immediately, we can press Update All Roads to see it. The last thing we need to check is to see if the road intersections and road connections are being used correctly. Sometimes this blind can get tangled or put in wrong when making the transition from OSM to Unreal. Luckily, we have a way of quickly checking, and that is by opening the output log and looking for a message that says that the geometry is not good. You can press Update All Roads on the Road Manager blueprint in order to get the message to show up again. And we can see there are quite a few roads that have invalid geometry. All right, from here, I'm just gonna go through the entire list of invalid roads and look at each one to see what's wrong with it. Let's start with the first one, which is BP Road Split 58. You can either copy that description or the other one that's right next to it. Either one doesn't matter. You can find either one by copying and then pasting it to the outliner. So I'm gonna paste in that one and I'm gonna press F and it'll just shoot me right to it and we can see that there is something wrong with this connection. If I look at it a little bit more closely, I can tell that this looks weird, and I know it looks weird because it has this thing jetting out of it, and that's because it has a road point too close to another road point. So if I delete one, sure enough, works. I have to press reset connection, and that looks normal. And let's move on to the next one. Let me copy this description. Paste it up here, and then press F to go find it. Okay, this one is too close. If I were to take a road point, let me just delete it because the other one's fine. And then press reset connection. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Move on to the next one. Copy it. Oh, there's quite a few that have a similar description, but I know that I am looking for. Road split 12. Or what is it? C17 is, yeah, B, B, road split 12. Let me copy that since it looks like that's a better description. There we go. Found it. Press F. Uh, this one is supposed to connect to this road, but it's out here. So we have to move this point back. All you have to do, select it and then move it out of here. I think this is actually going to be tackled later in the video, so let me leave that there. Uh, let's go to intersection 144. Okay, so this one's just a little bit too close as well. We'll delete a point, and we'll back up the one that's over here. And then press reset connection. That looks good. Just did 144. Let's move on to 162. Press F. And yeah, this is barely even a road. At this point, if you have a road that only looks like a sliver of something, probably best just delete it. I can tell that's right near the edge of the map. Yeah. So I'm going to delete this road. It'll say, uh, do you really want to delete it? Yep. It'll break some references, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be gone in a second. All right. Now that, that one was fixed, that was 162. Let's go to road split 26. And just like that, we found it. F. Okay, so this one... It tried to shift it over too far, and you can see that it's kind of twisting the spline. We don't want that, so let's shift it back. 
We want it shifted just about there. We could probably even widen up the connection just a bit and then press reset connection. And that looks a lot better. All right, so that was Rosebud 26. Let's do 27. I'm going to guess since it has a similar name, it's probably the one on the other side of this one. Oh, no. Okay, so this one's way too close to the road. If we were to back it up, go into this one, reset connection. Yeah, that looks all right. And then if we do the last one, road split 38, copy it in there, click it, F. Uh, where is it trying to connect to? Oh, it's trying to connect to this road, but it is too close. I think the problem with this road, if I go over to the OSM tags of this, it's actually either supposed to be above or below. And because of that, it looks like it's overlapping because they're being put on the same elevation. So my recommendation is just to remove the, the whole thing in entirety. Uh, so I'm just going to delete this. Probably best to just sweep through and delete all the rest of these as well. I think that's what I do in the final map as well. Because you really wouldn't see these any other way. And I believe that is all the errors for going through all of them. Let me back out to standard view. And let me go through the rest of this. All right, so let's quickly go back to that road that we skipped over. I believe it's this one down here. Press F to zoom in, but we need to zoom in a little bit further. So to explain what happened, what went wrong with this road, is that it tried to distance itself from the middle to the edge a certain distance. But since it wasn't coming out at a smooth 90 degree or even uh, 45 degree an angle here, it just tried to come out at like a 5 or 10 degree, it was moved just more into the road. And so it never really had the chance to separate. So what you would want to do here is you'd want to move some of the points so that would be separated from the road. We can tell this this is kind of like a, an off exit. So I'm going to move it so that it's down here. What you would really want to do is have the connection blueprint uh, be long and wide in order for to make a new lane. So I'm going to do update connected roads from this one since I can't see the road connection anymore. And now I can see that it's there. I'm going to press reset connection. And that doesn't quite look good, so we need to adjust it quite a bit. For the road connection, I'm going to make it a very wide road connection. Let's try 700. That is quite wide, maybe a little too wide. Uh, let's get it down to 500. That looks pretty good. But now let's move it down a bit. Uh, let's see which way. If we move it down this way, yep, that's good. Let's move it down a little bit further. Let's put it at negative 1,200. The shift. Let's reset the connection. And let me pull out the spline point. So that kind of starts to make that new lane. You can adjust this to however you like it. If we go about there... We should probably separate it a little bit further, but this is kind of how you would create a new lane if you wanted to like this. There are multiple different ways you can make a new intersection and have it connect to that. But in order to make a new lane, looks pretty good. If we up the road resolution, this would connect a little bit better. Uh, but let's keep the red road resolution as it is, because otherwise my computer will go ballistic. So let's cover a few other oddball things while we're here. Uh, like this back here, this has a certain curve to it. In the real world, it would probably have less of a curve, so you can go into the curve scale. Probably tone that down a bit. You want to tone it down just enough to where the corner isn't too sharp, but it's still a pretty straight edge road. The same goes to uh, the road that is in the middle here. This little pitchfork, this is not supposed to be as curvy as it is. So let's try to set the curve scale way down for this one as well. Do it to this. And then you have to adjust the road connections that it's in such a way where it will connect pretty well. So 
that's decent. Yeah, I would say that's decent as is. A uh, few other things. So I can tell that this also needs to be disconnected. And there's a bunch of little things you'll find like that that you may need to work through. Uh, I think there's another curvy road in here. There's a parking lot and there's a main road in it. You can either choose to delete the parking lot or you can uh, straighten this out. Uh, choice is really up to you. But let me return to the main position again. There's another error where my program does not know how to handle how many lanes are supposed to be on a road because OSM specifies it as three lanes going eastbound. The program does not yet know how to interpret that, so you may have to manually enter the number of lanes. Typically, OSM gives the tag of three right lanes more often than three eastbound lanes, and the program knows how to handle the former a lot better. And a cool feature about my program's importing is that you should be able to see all the OSM data in the OSM tags of the roads. This can have even more helpful information such as the speed limit, road name, and like we mentioned before, the number and direction of lanes. The last major error is that roads with multiple lanes may not line up when it adds or removes a lane. This is because OSM marks the double yellow lines as the center of the road even when it's off center. To fix this, you may have to move the road to the left or to the right to line up the lanes. A lot of these errors can be fixed with extra development hours, so we are trying to balance our work between development of the dynamic road system, OSM, and YouTube videos so that everything is of the highest quality and fixed in an appropriate amount of time. If you are watching this video way after it's published, some of these errors probably got fixed by the time you are watching this. Anyways, those are the majority of errors you'll see, and can sometimes take a couple of hours to fix all the little imperfections. But it should save you a ton of time having them imported like this, instead of doing everything by hand. From this point, you should be able to drive on the road with vehicles. I'm using the vehicle template from Unreal Engine and changing the game mode to the Advanced Vehicle Game Mode. I wanted to point out, while not necessarily an error, something that could go wrong. If you drive really fast through an intersection, there's a chance your car will get launched. This is because every road has grading that bumps up the middle of the road like real roads do, and the road connection is too short from the OSM importing to make it a gradual incline, so it turns into a mini ramp. This could be fixed a couple of different ways. One is to set all the road grading to zero. Two is back up all roads connecting to the intersection and make the road connection larger to allow it to be a gradual incline. And three, is that you can stop driving like a lunatic. No, but seriously, if all cars are driving a reasonable speed, they won't be affected. Like city simulators wouldn't be affected, but racing games would be. If you are using this pack and like it, I would greatly appreciate a good review on the Unreal Marketplace. It leads to more sales and helps fund the development of these features. Thank you. That's it for this video. Until next time.